inevitably in Inkscape you are going to be using the text editor. So today I'm going to give you the basics on how to do exactly that. But if you stay to the end of the video, I am also going to show you the creative corner, a new segment in my videos, and I am going to give you the chance to get your very own website. Hello again my friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Rob from Button Press Graphics and today I'm going to be telling you how we work with text. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now when we begin, we are going to need the text editor open. So you come to the top toolbar and where it has the letter T, that is your text editor. Click that and it will open up your properties box on the right hand side like this now at the moment by default i've still got the settings open from the last text box that i entered which was working with text and you saw it in the intro of this video well we can come over to this little toolbar here and when we select the text tool that enables us to click anywhere so now that we are able to type, we can type whatever we want. So for me, I'm going to do, of course, button press graphics. I had a bit of difficulty typing for some reason then, but there you go. Now we have our text in a text box. So the next thing that you might want to do is come over to the right hand side and you can pick one of your fonts now of course when you are going through your fonts you will only have the basic ones if you want some new fonts you can simply go to google fonts that is as simple as it sounds you go through all the fonts that are stored on google and then you click it will expand your selection and then you go up to family in the top right hand corner this will give you your download download it into the folder of your choice i've got one conveniently named fonts and once you've downloaded it you can open it and once you have opened it select the true font file type and that will bring up a new window which will allow you to install your font now the next time that you restart Inkscape the font will become available right in the font list on the right hand side. So now you know how to install your own fonts you can go down and you can select the one that I've just downloaded which I will leave a link to which is the Tilt Neon. Now it's good to know that if there are separate styles like bold they are going to appear in this list here. At the moment, there is only one for this font, which is regular. So I'm going to leave it as is. The font size is exactly what you would expect. It is the size of your font. Now, before we continue, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the properties toolbar at the top. Most of it is pretty self-explanatory. This is your font collection. You select this and it will open up all your recently used fonts, your collections editor, or your document fonts. This button will show you all the available fonts that you have on your system and within Inkscape, the ones that are compatible. Next is your font selector. So if you select this, all the fonts will be appearing right down below in a list. Next is your font style. If there's only one, which is normal, then you're not going to get anything that will appear in the drop down. If you have a font that has variable styles, then you will be able to change it there. This is your font size, like I've just explained in the box to the right. This is your measure. So centimeters, inches, points, and then I want pixels, of course. Next, you have the spacing between your baselines. 
So if I was to increase this, as you can see, the text becomes further apart. And I want it around there. Next, your lines can be in centimeters, inches, and I'm just going to leave it as lines just like that. Now, you finally, you've got your orientation like you would expect. I'm going to keep it selected on central. So it's all down in the center. And then this is your spacing. This could be its own video on its own. But the spacing basically dictates the spacing between your letters, your words, and the spacing in between words that are on the same line. Now that you've chosen your font, you've chosen your style and your size, and you've got the orientation correct, you can go to your select tool. And now you can increase the size to whatever you would like. However, if you was to come to the edit paths by nodes tool, as you can see, there is only one node. And that is just going to dictate the bounding box, as you can see. Now, one last thing about the menu on the right hand side, until you click apply, none of your changes will appear on your canvas. As soon as you click apply, all your changes will happen on the canvas as well. If you want to actually edit each individual word, you will not be able to do that because this is still a text box and it's still a font. So in order to change that, we can come up to path and go object to path. Now, as you see, even though we are on the edit paths by nodes tool, it's just disappeared. And now it is a group of objects. So well, with it still selected, if we come up to ungroup, we have now ungrouped all the words and now we can edit them in any way we could with a normal path. We can change the color. We can add a stroke. And as you can see, we get the full effect of the font. Now, of course, because this is a font that has overlapping lines like this, you can go in and you can edit them yourself and you can make sure that everything lines up. Or you can simply come to the shape builder and you can change it in that way. Just like that. So what else can you do with text? Well, there is a few other basic things that you can do with text. For example, if you take a circle and just draw a circle while holding shift and control to make sure it's perfectly symmetrical, we now have a circle in the middle of the canvas. But if we select the circle and this one and then come to text and put on path, nothing is going to happen because this is no longer a text path. However, if we was to make another text path, now, as you can see at the bottom, this is a text path, whereas if I was to select the other text that I've got, you will notice it says path 390. That is because I have already done object to path with these. So, if we still have a text box, then we can simply select a shape like this circle, for example, and go to text, put on path. Now, as you can see, I have actually put the text around the circumference of the circle. But if you want it at the top and not the bottom, that is very easy. We can simply select the circle, select it again to get the rotation handles and then rotate the circle just like that. But I am not done. What if you wanted the text on the inside of the circle? Well, that's just as easy as well. So once you've created some more text, you can simply create another circle. I'll just turn snapping on for a second, just so I can make sure it's in the middle. And when it's the right size, turn snapping back off. 
we can keep it selected select the second group of text go to text put on pass then we're going to rotate it like we did in the previous step but this time with the circle selected we're going to simply come up here to where it says flip the object vertically and now once you have got something that looks a little bit like this we can select the circle on its own and we can turn off the fill color and then hold shift and turn off the stroke color and then we can come to the bottom circle and do exactly the same we can turn off the stroke and the fill and there you go this will be good to put a logo in the center and have text going around the outside but that is it my friends this is how you can work with text Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, today is the first day where I am going to have a section that we call Creative Corner. What you can see on screen is what one of the viewers has sent in to me, and I have to say, I am really impressed. I love the Northern Lights one that you can see because of the silhouette. It's just a very simple but effective design. And I also really, really like the geometric design to this line work. I think them are two really good designs. But if you've got your own designs, then please send them in. Get in touch with me by following any of the links in the description down below to have your work featured. And if you want to go and say good job to the artist for this work, then you can find them in a link in the description down below. Finally, one last thing. I am fortunate enough to have been chosen by the free website guys to get a brand new website. I've been wanting a website for a long time, but they are very expensive to get professionally done. And this one I got from some absolutely amazing guys that were an absolute joy to work with. So if you want your own website, then you can apply by following the link in the description. And if you do get accepted and you go ahead to get your site created, it will directly benefit this channel and button press graphics. So I would really appreciate it if you could go and check it out. If it's not for you, then it's not for you. No harm, no foul. Now, until next time, my friends, I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell. Say thank you so much for watching. And if it helped, please let me know in the comments. Until next time, I will see you in the next one.